Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly, Daily Wednesdays, where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux and open source. I'm Vince Stone, that is Jordan Hwang, and hey, are you watching this live? Twitch.tv forward slash Linux Teamcast, 3 p.m. What's up? What's new? Big thanks, uh, taking a break uh, on holiday mm -hmm. this week, chilling out. Uh, you played Darkest Dungeons yesterday, man. I didn't get to watch any of it. Yeah, it was. But I oh. added you as a friend on Twitch. I followed you on I, Twitch. I, I saw that. That that meant a lot to me. Thank you. Yeah, Darkest Dungeon Two. It's weird. It's really weird because like the combat is the same and it's doubled down on. Like they they added a bunch more stuff to the point where there is a hotkey for bringing up the status glossary at like any point in the game, just because there there are so many like effects. Um, but like it's super stripped down. Like there's. Um, like the run, the runs are really short now. Um, like, uh, there, there's no like village building or whatever. And it, it does the, it does the Hades thing where it wants you to die a lot to like build oh. up your characters so that, that later on you can take on like the bigger and bigger challenges. Did they do that in Darkest Dungeon 1? Like when your character died, you got to maintain like some stats. Well, so Darkest Dungeon 1 was like more about you had, um, you had like a whole roster of dudes. Uh, and you you had to like pick which ones you sent out because like you had to manage the recovery of them. This game does away with all of that. You pick your four heroes at the beginning, mm -hmm. and then you just go. And if any one of them dies, there's a couple. Up, there's like one or two spots where you can pick a new guy and like drop them in there. But um, yeah, it's it's like super it's super cut down. And like I understand why they did all of it, but I also liked a bunch of the stuff. But the fights are like way more intense. And like so much more unfair. Oh man, it's it's it's, it's punishing. There, there there's a couple boss fights where it's just like, oh, first round, you're all in stun lock. Now you have to sit here for 15 minutes while the team, while the enemy team just wails on you. It's like, like one of the characters on the baddie side, like a cannon. I, I maybe uh, I thought I, I saw a stream and like one of the people that were fighting against was just a big cannon. That, you know that does that doesn't surprise me because like there are uh, there's like multiple runs so I haven't even gotten past the first one yet mm -hmm. and like it gets progressively harder and harder and harder okay. so yeah like it's this this game is brutal Oh, it's it it, it it it's harsh but um I'm I'm enjoying it so far sounds like you're growing to it no multiplayer no multiplayer so far <sighs> um yeah but I I think I think if they were gonna do it it would have to be like the um. It would have to be like the uh, DD one, where it's basically just like a completely different game because all the abilities are like not meant are meant to like synergize against PVE and like fight the PVE abilities. Mm. So like, yeah, DD one multiplayer is just like, hey, everyone has new abilities and they're all like super PVP focused and like they're all balanced against each other as opposed to balanced versus the monsters. Yeah, the game I've been playing, um, I've talked about it a couple of weeks ago. I might even brought it up last week. Is uh, Recore. Mm -hmm. Which was the oh. game that Microsoft released, and it was going to be a big thing. And like, it the game, just, it was it was the Game Pass one that was like it was Xbox exclusive. Mm -hmm. This was before right. game, yeah, it was like, right, 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 yeah. And like they put a ton of money into it, it just disappeared. And I got it for like three bucks on Steam. And this is the definitive edition. And here's the thing: first ten hours, fun. The entire time I'm playing for ten hours, I'm like, why is everybody hating on this? Then you hit the grind wall. And it turns into where you have to go up a dungeon on multiple levels, and uh, then you have to go back out in the world and like run through more dungeons to upgrade. I think I'm done with it, but for three that, bucks, I thought it was a good deal. That reminds me a bit of just of Disgaea, where if you want like the really good weapons, you have to do the 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 weapon dungeons, which are just like entirely separate dungeons. That your your reward for completing them, in addition to like XP, is just the good items. Mm -hmm. And so, if you want to be able, and th there there's a wall at the point where it's like, hey, you need to grind up your dudes. And so, the only way to do it is just do infinite dungeons. And I'm like, this is kind of regressing, and I'm not getting anywhere. So I'm just gonna put this down. Well, I just don't like that in a game, especially when you can do the first ten hours, kind of free form, playing around, mm -hmm. doing your things. Then it's like, oh no, flip, uh, switch flip. Yeah. Now we <laughs> grind. Especially when they gate off options and it's like, oh, this looks cool. I really want to get to it. Like, oh, well, you don't qualify for it. You need to grind in order to get the get the one thing that you can use to unlock it. And you're like, 
Well, it doesn't really know what it wants to be because there's these insane platforming challenges and basically you get to an arena, you get to do a couple of these to get up to the next level and like the mm. final area. And it subtly drops a hint by like one-shotting you mm. with one of the baddies and you're like, right. Hmm. Don't, don't do that. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm just going to chill out on that. Let's start off with what we were here to talk about. And that is uh, Hector. Hex won't give it to you. Yeah, right. Uh, are you running Wayland on anything? Laptop? Uh, yeah. Uh, this guy is running Wayland. TV box is running Wayland. Wife's computer is running Wayland. Uh, work machine is running Wayland. So yeah. I'm, I'm, running, I'm running quite a bit of Wayland these days. A lot of Wayland. Uh, so Hector, you might know him. You might love him. He's working on the uh, Apple M1. And he says... Asashi Linux, if you're going to be running Asashi Linux, uh, get, get rid of the Wayland. Uh, not get rid of it. <laughs> Don't do the, that. The, the, the opposite of that. The op- yes, the opposite of what that guy just said. And he had a long post on Mastodon going on about, hey, why, why does this make sense? And yeah, you know what? This makes perfect sense for the M-series, man, because you know, he goes through it. He's like, hey, we originally shipped X because we didn't have working GPU drivers and software rendering was the way to go. However, you know, that's been flipped. Now that they have working GPU drivers, Wayland is significantly faster. And then OS 10. Yeah. Wow. I mean, come on, man. The, it, to me, it makes perfect sense. I would just, you know, especially when you're working with something like this reverse engineering project, just use whatever they're yeah, working you, with at the time. Right. I, yeah. My you first... kind of want bleeding edge. Right. And I, were, were there anybody well, who was sitting back going, man, no. This line in the sand on my M1 Mac running Linux on it has to run X. Like, uh, I, so I mean, there there are, there are holdouts, right? Like we've had we've had a couple of people in like Discord, and we've had we've talked about it, where it's like, yeah, I don't trust SSDs, and they were they were saying that like in 2017, and it's like, I don't know, man. By like every objective metric, they're just better. I don't know, I, like I don't I don't trust it. I think there's there's definitely uh, there's definitely some. Some of that with like Wayland and Pipewire, and it, like uh, we we got a lot of that with System D, right? Like, at any t- any time some new thing comes down the pike, people are 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 very resistant to it. Um, but like, uh, but uh, as as brought up in the in the Mastodon thread, uh, and and uh, Hector uh, amended his posts, Wayland Wayland support isn't a hundred percent feature complete. There are quite a few gaps, including accessibility, which is a big one for a lot of people who. Um, like the, the accessibility, uh, under windows is definitely a lot better than it was in the past, but it's b- because, because of Linux's nature of being open source, there've been a lot more specialized and integrated like accessibility projects like Orca, for example. Um, and that, 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 uh, goes into something from the, the next story we'll get into a little bit more, but the, uh, the security model, the lack of like direct shareability and needing to use side channels to um to do to do some sort of some types of inter process communication does make uh, implementing Wayland a bit trickier in in those edge cases. Mm. Yeah, I think the accessibility thing that that's a thing we've all been guilty of of like making a thing and we could we forget about a certain subset of users. And you're like, oh right, that's a yep. real issue. Like Orca is just, just not a good experience, as you were saying with that. Um, couple of things though, man, like. Max aside, let's just talk about like PCs because why is this transition taking so long? I think this is a, a real question. I think a lot of people have asked themselves, like, you know, Waylon, how long has Waylon been in development, Jordan? Oh, well over a decade. Yeah, well over a decade. Uh, so I, I, I did a bit of looking into the timeline of things because you, you, you brought up Mirror and NVIDIA. So uh, we, we, we know Wayland was starting to be a thing like, I think, early. Early 2010s, people are like, hey, we need to start looking at a replacement for X. This is a security nightmare. Um, so uh, Mir was actively being pushed from about 2013 to 2017. Canonical was going pretty hard on it. Uh, they were they were working with hardware vendors. Uh, Nvidia was um, Nvidia was kind of in this no man's land where they're like, oh, are, what 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 way are we going to support things? We're going to do things this way. Um, flash forward to uh, yeah. 2017, they give up on Mirror. Sorry, Patrick. Yeah, too bad. Um, then uh, we we actually only get uh, GBM support in NVIDIA drivers uh, as of 2021. But from 2017 to now, that's about 
five years of like pure Wayland development time. And there has been quite a bit of progress if you think about it. Uh, GameScope has mm-hmm. just sprung out of nowhere. That's like probably one of the most commonly used Wayland compositors. Pipe, um, what do you call it? Uh, Wine on Wayland has made a great number of strides. They're starting to upstream that. Once that's once that's natively supported, Proton's going to ingest that, and that's going to remove another big barrier for uh, uh, full Wayland future. Um, as, as mentioned, the actual NVIDIA support as of 2021, you can actually use your NVIDIA card with right. uh, with like Mutter or Kwin or whatever. Uh, I would also I would also credit Pipewire. Pipewire uh, ac- actually implements like a multimedia stack in a way that is better, more compatible with uh, with the Wayland security model. Um, one thing I think may have caused the slowdown of like Wayland progress is we have we have sexier fish in the pond right now. Um, we have we have stuff like DXVK, D9VK, uh, VKD3D, all the wine stuff, all the Proton stuff. That's where a lot of like the big brain power of like Linux graphics is going right now. That's where uh, that's where a lot of like the Mesa development is is focused. Um, and I, I think like oh yeah, you know, re- replacing our, our our display server is kind of a le- is a, a less sexy, less flashy uh, goal when we could say like, hey, look at this. We have Darkest Dungeon two running, basically day of release. Check out these new games that have come out. You can just run them on 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 your Linux desktop. And I think right. that 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 is like what's really grabbing the mind space, and that's where a lot of the engineering effort is being directed. Now we're still seeing some movement on the back end. We see like Red Hat uh, saying that they want to deprecate uh, X eleven by what Rel ten. So you know there there's there's um there there's definitely there's definitely forward motion. Uh, I think yeah there there's just like a cup there's like uh like recording like interprocess communication accessibility. There are still a couple big pieces that are missing, but we're getting there. Do you think the Steam Deck's had anything to do with it? Help driving I that? Hundred percent. Yeah. Hundred percent. Again, GameScope. Uh, and just the the general improvement of the of the Linux driver stack. Once upon a time, Xorg was your only option because that was the only thing that had like decent 3D acceleration drivers. Mm-hmm. Now, hell, we have uh, we have NVIDIA open source drivers now, right? It's, like it's getting there, it's getting there, and yeah, I'm always excited for it. I I've said multiple times like the biggest obstacle to Wayland is X11, and that reason being X is traditionally and even today good enough. Yeah, but it's it's definitely it's definitely fallen apart at the at the seams, and there's no one really willing to maintain it anymore. I think that's that's the other thing is most of, most of the people who were uh, well, I, as, I, as, I as, hear as, that what you're about to say, and the, the people actively developing on it, maintenance is still being taken care of. Maintenance is still being taken care of, yeah, but like nothing, no, nothing is really moving forward. And I think, um, I, I think, I think uh, one one thing that uh, Linux is very, very good at is like ultimately moving forward. If you look at a, a rival platform like Windows, there's still a lot of cruft from like 3.1. If you want to actually get anything done in Windows, you need to pull up the OG tool. You need to crawl through the control panel or whatever and find the the the, the console or whatever that was introduced in um, in like MMC version 1.2. Oh man, you, you just install, a, what, what is it, Windows Tweaks for 95 and you're good? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but like we we we've we've been able to, we've been able to push that dial forward a lot in 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 ways that like other operating systems haven't and and that's yeah. also one of the negative things to say about that is we do that by breaking stuff go go play a Linux game from ten years ago I mean that's why we have Strider working on uh, getting old uh, Ubuntu running through VirGL to play Heroes of Might and Magic well I mean it does lead to things like Proton though like it, easy and, and yeah yeah just run the windows version because hey that was that thing's built up i for me there, there's a whole different thing uh for desktop use i absolutely suggest everybody run Waylon, use pipe wire you're gonna be good as like jordan has attested you know for running on a work laptop media stuff like that where do you run x literally literally on this box right here mm-hmm. uh yeah and that that is mostly because I don't want to fight. Well, I I say that we, I, and you know I I, I said a half truth earlier. Okay. You know, Nvidia on Wayland works. 
I still don't want to tango with it just yet. I, I, I want I want to give that a little bit more time to bake. I want I want to like see a couple like people show me like, hey Jordan, stop being such a, a, a regressive idiot. This works. Um, I, I've installed it from scratch and it works and it works fine. We haven't I, I haven't seen that just yet. Are you but still like, in the uh, cool story, bro? Of that relationship, still, yeah. Yeah, but like I'm willing to be convinced. I uh, I I am I am all for moving forward. And, and adopting the, the new technology as as required. Um, immut- immutable root, I might be a little a little resistance to just because you know, for, again for a work laptop it's fine for my yeah. fun box. Uh, no, I I, I want to be able to break my root. Yes, I, you know maybe I want to be able to break my root and restore from a snapshot. So maybe maybe some immutable some immutability is good or like targeted immutability. I think I don't I don't want to break any core system stuff. For like me, is I I need something I'm like ooh that does something that. I can't currently do, or in reality, like even on the desktop, I've said XFCE. Like when we start seeing some real work being done on XFCE, because that's a big one for me for Wayland adoption. Mm-hmm. Uh, unlike some people in the audience, I'm not a big fan of relearning how my desktop works every de- decade because they decided to change everything. XFCE looks like XFCE when it started. I mean, in- I- XFC yeah. looks like whatever you set up XFC to looks like look like right. Like, yeah, I mean it has that option. Like out of the box, it's XFC. They 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 don't put the focus on like reinventing the user experience, which mm-hmm. to me I think is a good thing. You know, focus on you know stability, code quality, and all that. I was surprised to see this man. Uh, the Wayland Compositor is up and running. It was committed last week, so mm-hmm. uh, and that's for XF Window Manager. Interesting. Interesting times. See, I want to play with that already. I'm like, ooh, I'm gonna see how that works. So mm. there we go. Jordan, are you gonna run out? Can you even get System 76 at a reasonable price in uh, Canada? Uh, you said reasonable price, so yeah. the answer is no. No. Uh, oh. uh, can Can I get us? I can get anything I want in Canada. Oh, right. Can, right. can I get it for a reasonable price? No. <laughs> But yeah, uh, they've they've been working on their new uh, desktop environment and done entirely in Rust Cosmic, and they have a status update. Um, and it comes with a bunch of neat stuff like the System seventy six scheduler, which I you 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 seem pretty interested in. I think I, that's I, I saw that, and dude, I'm like, this um, is Ven fuel right here. Uh, for just like at the end of the day, man, for somebody who's using a uh, just even on the desktop playing games and all that, having all that on the side. It's great, man. Um, like, would you have something against it? Uh, I, I, I don't. Um, I but mean, it's like, going to give you like the priority for whatever's focused right, in the current window that you're working with. And my first thought is like, oh man, I want to open up GIMP and put it in classic mode where it's 11 <laughs> windows and like, yeah, ha ha. Oh man, yeah, no, that's it's it, it's it's a good idea, right? Like, um, people people play with like a lot of kernel space schedulers having something like in user space that that uh is a little more a little bit more user facing is a neat ability to for system 76 to have um yeah all, all this a look, lot look, of pictures of the space shuttle why yeah it looks it looks very macintoshy i, I gotta say um i'm, I'm definitely getting dare some, you. that looks nothing okay it looks a lot like a mac Never mind. Yeah, uh, but so uh, they're, they're in, in this blog post, they talk about panels and the the applets. Applets are kind of like GNOME shell extensions. The panels, they're kind of like docs but, and panels. They're the best of both worlds. Um, yeah, uh, they have, uh, so they, they have these applets that are like, they can, they can be shortcuts. They can be basically whatever. This is how, uh, this is basically the um, Cosmic's widgeting system. Um, and, you know, we were talking about Orca. They do have some initial support in Orca. Are uh, in in, uh, in cosmic uh, and sort sort of. There's I, no keyboard support. You yeah, can I, use a, that, you, you can use a mouse. I, I think it's very comfortable to say in the fact that it launches. Yes, uh, as mentioned before, like uh, the, the issue is like um, getting text out of the the Wayland session and into another thing. Mm-hmm. So there there still needs to be some R and D work done on what what is a secure way of doing this uh but one one big bonus for accessibility is um their their iced library which is the, their 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 core functionality uh uh system library uh is being integrated with uh access kit which is an accessibility toolkit um and they're partnering with them pretty closely to have they even have a couple of their um 
the cosmic features on the uh, on the access kit roadmap now, which it's it's pretty cool to see someone take like an accessibility focused approach to desktop environments because again it is kind of an afterthought um, as as, as uh, was brought up in the in the Wayland discussion and I think I think like that that it is unfortunately the the reality of it that uh, the accessibility stuff is often an afterthought so having something baked in right away and ha having the ability to have that extensibility in place is going to be huge for people to be able to actually, you know, use the thing. This is true. System 76 has been kind of interesting. And to your point about it, you know, looking a little appley, I mean, you know, whatever. But I, I mean, I've always wanted to see what comes of this, you know, it can be one column I-76 and because they have control now over the hardware that they make and they want to do their own software stack, including the desktop and having that unified Linux experience. Linux just happens to be what they've chosen to use. And I want to see what the end product looks like. You know, it's, it, it's that retro uh, Macintosh look like back when they were actually made out of wood. Yeah. You built you ordered a kit and you built it in your garage. Oh, Got to bring, bring it back for the for the modern era. Uh, that was, you know, you want to get Linux on the desktop. That's how you do it. You know, now, you, 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 you drive the penguin in the front of the factory and you drive the computer out of the back with like full custom, you know, support. Ah, and, the, 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 the Carmageddon method. I see. Yes. The, the Model P. For the penguins um now here, here here's here's the real question though all this is well and good but the real question we want answered is are you using linus tech 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 tips as your major qa user story is this thing linus proof see that's that's good public facing but anybody with a you know an iota of sense realizes like is that linus linus's writer's proof I mean, that's what that's what I mean. It's it's the royal Linus, right? Like, <laughs> right. Let, 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 let's be real. It's not a one man show run, ma making and editing all these videos. I think we can like dispel that 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 myth. That's not that's not how content production works. Um, I, I don't in, know if it, like uh, is it uh, you know uh, techtainment? Like, yeah, yeah it's like, in, in, infotainment. I think is like is probably like the right the right word. Right. I mean, we're 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 in that category. Uh. More, 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 more emphasis on the attainment than the info, but you know, well, with that, may, like, may, may, maybe minimal emphasis on the attainment. Do you think, um, what well, that would be like if we were doing a bunch of scripted videos like this? What? You, why did you send me the script that I'm reading? Just to, just to mess with you. I mean, oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I made, made sense at the time, man. So, mm. Hey, maybe you want to play around with some vintage ancient retro technology well too bad we're going to talk about firewire it's none of those things but it is old and you can use it on linux with pretty much anything unless you got a laptop somebody already asked about a laptop and i'm like let it go do not chase that dragon what about those pc mia firewire that ports? that was once a lot uh, that or if you have an apple uh, mac with thunderbolt preferably the old one there's a firewire uh, 400 800 800 to thunderbolt one thunderbolt one to thunderbolt two Ah, you got to do the Tower of Power. Yeah, and, you know, from Apple, and those are like $80, $90 a pop for the adapters. So, if you've been looking for a retro way to connect your vintage audio interface, here we go. Unlike camcorders or hard disk drives, uh, FireWire audio interfaces are absolutely still worth using 2023 because uh, we figured out how to do digital audio conversion back in like 2003, 2005. Nothing's really changed since then. And now we know we have kernel support for FireWire until at least 2029 barring a Raptor bus. And yeah, I thought I'd just walk through this. It's a short video. It's under five minutes. Shows you the ins and outs, what you can expect to work with Pipewire, Pulse Audio, Jack, Alsa, you name it. What you got to do if you just want a sound device versus if you want a multi-channel professional audio recording interfaces and what problems you may encounter. Also, a little Q&A at the end. Where to buy them? What do I recommend? And what to avoid? There you go. That's done. I totally yeah. made that thumbnail in uh, DaVinci Resolve because I didn't feel like opening GIMP. I mean, uh, that's fair. And I probably spent three times as long just because I didn't feel like opening GIMP. I mean, I mean, there, there, there's a certain, there's a certain, um, I guess, uh, you know, I, I started doing it this way, and God damn it, I'm, a, I'm gonna finish doing it this way. I, I could make this easier on myself, but no. <laughs> uh we, we could we could definitely do that we could just do a show where we drop electronics i have plenty of expensive electronics to drop do you have a high enough building though and like a slow-mo camera i did say from what height it's going to be like you know half a centimeter 
Yeah. I'm just super slow. Like, Bonk. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So there you go. Go check that out at linuxemcast.com. And of course, all this is brought to you by our patrons. Patreon.com forward slash linuxemcast. If you want to support the show, head over there, which I haven't even put that in the show notes because I was scrambling. Uh, let me Oops. see. There it is. Shameless plug. Help us out if you got some spare quarters, pennies, dimes, or billions and billions of dollars. We'll put that to good work. Try to make some educational content, some entertaining content, probably not a lot of scripted content. And there it is. You get a bunch of bonus. Memorize the script then. Ah, goddamn. Have you tried to memorize scripts? I have, yes. I don't do that. That's why I got really good at spot reading. I, I, I got to at least know what I'm saying. I, it, it doesn't have to necessarily be verbatim, but like, I got, I got to at least know what I'm saying beforehand. When I got to go off of a script, I will do like the cocky, I got this mode and I'll do it and I'll start improvising. Then I'll start rambling. Then I'll get way out in left field. And like, then it, it's the whole circle of life going back to me saying, just read the script, dummy. Yep. And you'll get through it and it'll fit in the allotted time spot. That, 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 that's, that's that ADD thing right there. It's just like, no, I, I don't need to do it. I, do. I can wing this. Uh, if you're a patron, you get access to this show, Live and Uncut Version uh, podcast, all the fun stuff. Hop in our Discord. Spend those Bezos bucks if you got them with a uh, Twitch Prime sub. You can also get access to our Discord where we're at the other six days of the week being ourselves. Got a nice group of people inside of there. And you can do things like Jordan. Jordan for Strange Brigade. Because we yeah. do game streams on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. Yes. Help carry me through a game I'm very, very bad at. <laughs> well, we, we might get to the end eventually. We uh, got to do that EA game at some point. Um, uh, which one? You know. The, oh, um, the two-person yeah, one. Yeah, t- it takes two. It yeah, takes yeah. two. So we, we have two a, brothers in a van. Right. And then a meteor hit. Tomatoes. Uh, the, we got a long history of playing multiplayer games through... And getting stuck. <laughs> Get, getting stuck, just being generally incompetent. Yeah, yeah. Go, go watch our Portal 2 playthrough. I think that's still on YouTube. Fun times. All right. So, uh, Raspberry Pis are pie-powered segments. This time, we're going to talk about stomp boxes, blue guitars, and there's a birthday cake. It's even mm, got skulls birthday, on it. Carol. I like that cake. Carol was 23. Mm. We're talking about the pie pedal. <sighs> so bad no you don't no you don't look at this uh, hey i got one of those yes, I do. well i got the bigger version of that that's a moto m2 i got an m4 and next to it is a stomp box however if you stomp on that box it's probably not gonna work anymore and maybe you've ever wanted to build something like this you know like this, this is a fuzz puddle you know a little distortion puddle and jordan you were talking about uh you know that's what you use now you just use your pc right yeah, you uh, you can download any number of plugins for free and just, like apply whatever distortion effects you want. Right, and but wouldn't it be a lot simpler if you could just put all that functionality inside of a Raspberry Pi? Now, your first thought is like, hey, that's going to be kind of a pain. You're not going to set up a desktop and a monitor and switch. No, that's where this is extra neat. This uses a Raspberry Pi app that's been developed just for this guy. So you can pull it up on, you know, you can do it through a web browser if you want, or through an Android app itself. And it doesn't require an internet connection because this little guy uses Wi-Fi Direct. And I thought, I was like, oh, that's kind of neat. That's that kind of neat. neat. You, don't, you don't see that a lot in right? open source projects. Yeah. And uh, it only uses, it only supports LV2 plugins right now, Jordan. Yes, um, with with a couple of caveats. Uh, it can't be a MIDI instrument or anything with control voltage, and it needs to have no GUI dependencies. It needs to support remote control, which the documentation says is most plugins, but not all of them. So your mileage may vary. Mm. I like it. And unfortunately, though, in this brave new world that we live in, this might not necessarily be the cost-effective solution it once was, considering a Raspberry Pi. Ah, oh, is that your spare Raspberry Pi that you found? That is, that is my spare Raspberry Pi. Is it a 2 gig, 4 gig? It is a 4 gig. Ooh. Um, with an 8 gig variant of Raspberry Pi still clocking in at well over $190. Um, yeah. a, little, a, little, a little expensive. I wonder, though, like, he says it's for Pi, it's for, uh, it's for a Pi 4 only. I wonder if you could get it on running on, like, a Nano Pi or basic, because it, it ships in a Deb, right? So you can... Yeah, it does run. ship in a Deb. It might just be raw horsepower. Um, 
it might yeah. require that quad core. I I would like to try it on your um like on, on eleven the, the core. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The the, the eight core the something yeah. with a rock chip in it and see yeah. how it works because those are affordable and available. Indeed. Uh, and I like the idea of an app. I like the idea of the app. I don't know how that works in well the real so, world though. So here's the thing though. Uh, the app does or the the software does support uh, taking MIDI inputs. So if your interface device has a MIDI input, mm -hmm. you can uh, you can set it up to like actually hook up a, an actual pedal to it if you wanted, hmm. or or uh, you can tie it to uh, and you you can use any uh, MIDI input. So if you have like a guitar or something that you want to like this is this is my whammy whammy key or whatever you could, my you could whammy bongos yeah no set, set up the dock key con controllers yes, that's exactly what i was thinking of yeah um, uh, yeah dark souls yeah. <laughs> i don't know man uh, uh just talking about this I was like, don't you have yeah i absolutely have a guitar in this room it was supposed to shape me into playing it and it's just sitting there in the corner yeah hi uh, right, yeah. yeah right, right over mm -hmm. there yeah, it's supposed to yeah, it's supposed to shame me. No, I well, I mean, you got to be like at least halfway in the. How many amps do you have? Got too many. Okay, <laughs> there, are, there are like three here. Okay, well, I got like two big amps, and I got like one little personal amp, and uh, I, got, I got two personals and a biggie. Mm. And like all this gear, like, do you touch that stuff anymore? It's like not really. Ah, I want to play I, with I, this. I, I stare, I stare at it, and think I should start playing again. That's mm -hmm. that's what it's there for. <laughs> Uh, yeah, re remember when you had calluses on your fingers? Those were the days. Not really. Um, but you could make cool sounds on, like, vinyl. So, that's gonna do it for this week. We'll be back next week, 3 p.m. Come watch us live, if you get a chance. But, until then, let's roll some credits. I feel the need to, like, grease myself up and take off my clothes to this music. That's because every time you hear this, you're like, Turkish bathhouse, Turkish bathhouse. I mean, it doesn't have to be in Turkey. It can be any kind of bathhouse. Well, I mean, it's a, it's just a Kleenex of bathhouses. It's the Turkish bathhouse. I, I guess, you know, you buy a box of Turkish bathhouse, and every time you want... You know what? No. Eject button. There this is go. the Safe for Work show. This is the Safe for Work show. I mean, just look up Turkish bathhouse on urban.com. Something, something, pull out, something, something, tissues. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, the closest one to me is going to be in Frisco, Texas, or uh, New York. Interesting. I think there's a couple in Toronto. Oh, really? Yeah. They look very nice. Anyway. Uh, all right, everyone. Thanks for working out. Say bye-bye. Bye-bye.